Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky visited the strategic city of Pokrovsk in the Donetsk region on Monday, where Russia has concentrated its main advance efforts since the capture of Avdiivka in February. Zelensky awarded soldiers holding the defensive line in Pokrovsk with state honors. Thanks to your strength the East is not entirely occupied by the Russian Federation. The enemy receives a daily response from you, from your brothers, Zelensky said during the meeting. Вітати вас особисто тут, в Покровську, на Бружний напрямок. Я знаю, що ви завдяки тільки вашій міцності Схід не окупован тотально Російською Федерацією. Ворог щоденно отримає відповідь від вас, від ваших побратимів. Прошу передати їм від мене велику вдячність від цього народу України. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov said the decision authorizing the use of the U.S.-supplied longer-range missiles by Ukraine to strike inside Russia will add fuel to the fire in the conflict. The weapons are likely to be used in response to North Korea's decision to send thousands of troops to support Russia in the Kursk region where Ukraine mounted a military incursion over the summer. It is obvious that the outgoing administration in Washington intends to take steps and they have been talking about this to continue adding fuel to the fire and provoking further escalation of tensions around this conflict, Peskov said. It is the second time the U.S. has permitted the use of Western weapons inside Russian territory within limits after permitting the use of HIMARS systems, a shorter-range weapon, to stem Russia's advance in Ukraine's Kharkiv region in May. Peskov also rejected the idea of a ceasefire along the line of combat in Ukraine, saying it's unacceptable for Russia. Если такое решение действительно было, было сформулировано э, и доведено до э, киевского режима, то, конечно же, это э, качественно новый виток, э, виток напряженности и качественно новая ситуация с точки зрения вовлеченности Соединенных Штатов в этот конфликт. Очевидно, что уходящая, уходящая администрация э, в Вашингтоне намерены принять шаги, собственно, они об этом и говорили, с тем, чтобы продолжать, продолжать подливать масло в огонь, в огонь и продолжать провоцировать дальше нагнетание напряженности вокруг этого конфликта. Президент Путин уже объяснил и объяснил очень просто. Дело в том, что эти удары наносят не Украину, эти удары наносят те страны, которые дают разрешение, потому что цели наведения, другое обслуживание выполняют не украинские военные. Это делают э, военные специалисты из этих самых западных стран. А это э, кардинальным образом как раз меняет модальность их вовлеченности в конфликт. В этом опасность и провокационность этой ситуации. Конечно, как это вариант, заморозки по по, по линии боевого столкновения, конечно, априори неприемлем для, для российской стороны. И в данном случае июньские сформулированные условия президента Путина, они полностью сохраняют свою актуальность. Это то, что нужно сделать для э, того, чтобы боевые действия были...
North Korean leader Kim Jong-un renewed his call for a limitless expansion of his military nuclear program to counter U.S.-led threats in comments reported Monday that were his first direct criticism toward Washington since Donald Trump's win in the U.S. presidential election. At a conference with Army officials on Friday, Kim condemned the United States for updating its nuclear deterrent strategies with South Korea and solidifying three-way military cooperation involving Japan which he portrayed as an Asian NATO that was escalating tensions and instability in the region. Kim also criticized the United States over its support of Ukraine against a prolonged Russian invasion. He insisted that Washington and its Western allies were using Ukraine as their shock troops to wage a war against Moscow and expand the scope of U.S. military influence, the North's official Korean Central News Agency said. Kim has prioritized his country's ties to Russia in recent months, embracing the idea of a new Cold War, and displaying a united front in Russian President Vladimir Putin's broader conflicts with the West. He has used Russia's war on Ukraine as a distraction to accelerate the development of his nuclear-armed military, which now has various nuclear-capable systems targeting South Korea and intercontinental ballistic missiles that can potentially reach the U.S. mainland. Kim has yet to directly acknowledge that he has been providing military equipment and troops to Russia to support its war against Ukraine and the KCNA's report didn't mention whether Kim made any comments toward Trump, whose election win has yet to be reported in the North state media. Kim met Trump three times in 2018 and 2019 in Trump's first presidency, but their diplomacy quickly collapsed over disagreements in exchanging the release of U.S.-led sanctions and North Korean steps to wind down its nuclear and missile program. North Korea has since suspended any meaningful talks with Washington and Seoul as Kim ramped up his testing activity, and military demonstrations in the face of what he portrayed as gangster-like U.S. threats. There's concern in Seoul that Kim in exchange for his military support of Russia would receive Russian technology in return to further develop his arsenal. Trump's election win has touched off speculation about a resumption of a summit-driven diplomacy with Kim, which was described by critics as a bromance. But some experts say a quick return to 2018 is highly unlikely, as too much has changed about the regional security situation and broader geopolitics since then. While the North Korean nuclear problem was relatively an independent issue during Trump's first term, it is now connected with broader challenges created by Russia's war on Ukraine and further complicated by weakened sanctions enforcement against Pyongyang, Huang Ildo, a professor at South Korea's National Diplomatic Academy, wrote in a study last week.